upstairs with a view of his yeah. 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 Ticket office is right across the way. Right. That's true. Yeah. You could probably come. The ticket office is right there. It's just the <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Quinnerly? Is that pronounced? Quinnerly, yes. Okay. All right. I just have a couple of announcements and then we'll go. Okay. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon. Welcome to our press conference with student athletes from West Virginia. Uh, just a couple reminders. Please silence your cell phones. There is no cell phone video, flash photography, or video cameras allowed in these interviews. The media may access the press conference video at the NCAA digital workroom. Um, when you have a question, please raise your hand. A microphone will be brought to you. Prior to each question, please give us your name and affiliation and address it to either one of the student athletes. With, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Uh, question for both of you: um, What do you make of the opponent that you're going to be have, you know, facing tomorrow? The Princeton Tigers. What do you know about them, and what kind of challenge do you think they'll give you guys? Um, Princeton is a, a good, disciplined offensive team. Uh, they play with a lot of ball screens. You know, they got a good point guard that can, you know, read ball screens well. Um, I don't really think we'll struggle much with them. I think as long as we, you know, bring our pressure that they'll struggle with us. But as long as we're just disciplined in our ball screen coverage, I think that might be our biggest challenge. JJ, go ahead. Uh, to piggyback off of what she said, uh, they do great getting to their pull-up jumpers. So just us trying to stop that, basically them coming off the screens, just us containing that, we'll be all right. Go ahead in the back. Joe Bricotta, West Virginia Metro News. JJ, with having two weeks off essentially in between games, how have the coaches kind of tried to get some competition amongst the team? How have the two weeks been spent for you guys? Um, for those two weeks, we had um, a couple off days, probably like three off days, I think. Then we got right back into it, competing with each other um, on the court. I think we had a couple of days where it was like 3v3, 4v4, and then getting up and down, of course. And then we started uh, prepping for Princeton. So it's been a good week for us. Jen Hatfield with the next, um, for both of you, just, you know, I know that you guys are a really tough defensive team. Um, how would you guys describe your style of play on that end? What makes you guys so tough to score on? Um, I would say that we genuinely love to play defense. So, I mean, it's fun, you know, getting steals and playing out in transition, scoring quick. Uh, I think we just, you know, get excited off of that and we feed off of that energy. Yeah, same. Um, we love getting out there, getting steals, and pushing the ball to get easy transition points. So that's really our identity. So, yeah. Go ahead in the back. Joe Picado, West Virginia Metro News. Jordan, going back a ways, you obviously played with Coach Kellogg a year ago. How did he kind of sell you that West Virginia was going to be a, a good spot for you when he came here? Uh, honestly, really, it was just trusted in him. I mean, I knew he was a winner. I knew he would win anywhere that he went. So I just put all my trust in him. And West Virginia just turned out to be the perfect spot, too, as well. Holly Rowe, ESPN. Hi. You two are neck and neck in the steals category. Is there a competition between you? Are you constantly pushing each other? Or how does that play out? Uh, not really. We don't really talk about it. I mean, we just go out there, see if we can get it, as much deals as we can. And at the end of the day, whoever has the most, it is what it is. We a team. Yeah. Go ahead, Jordan. Uh, I don't, I don't know who's leading, but it's just like when she gets a steal, and then it's like it motivates me. Like, okay, I'm gonna give me a steal now. <laughs> so I mean, we don't check the stats, but I know we're we're pretty close. Likes to defend the mid-range, likes to shoot the mid-range shot. 
Uh, honestly, no. Like they shoot a lot of pull up jumpers. I mean, we we take a lot of pull up jumpers. I say probably me mostly. <laughs> I take a lot of pull up jumpers, but I've never seen a team collectively take that many. Here in the front. Jen Hadfield with the next. Just just knowing that uh, tomorrow's sessions are sold out, Monday's sold out, uh, what kind of atmosphere are you expecting and, and how much are you looking forward to playing in front of a really big crowd here for the NCAA tournament? I mean, we expect, you know, a lot of people, considering you said it's sold out, but, I mean, we played in big crowds before. I mean, we, we love it. I mean, we love playing in front of a lot of people and, you know, proving people wrong, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, same, you know, crowds out there. You like to look good, play good. So it's going to be a great time, great experience. Go back to Holly. I'm sorry we all sat so spaced out, so you have to wait for this microphone to pass around. <laughs> I apologize. Um, it takes a certain type of person to want to press all the time and to live with the press and to play in that style. Um, could you each answer this question? W what allows you to be such a tough competitor? Because it takes a lot to play that way. Uh, I think just us as a group, I think we all collectively just love playing defense and then him bringing in that press for 40 minutes just made us even more hungrier, ready to go out there and play, honestly. And it makes us, it easier for us to score on the back end too. Yeah, basically what JJ said, I mean, we prepare really hard to be able to, you know, press for 40 minutes, you know, shout out to Zach <laughs> in those September workouts. But uh, yeah, basically, like she said, we just, you know, love playing defense. So it just comes naturally for us. Any further questions? All right, thank you. We'll thank dismiss you. our student athletes and have Coach Kellogg in here in a little bit. Thank you. Starting at the Minnesota game. I'm the way to
Hey, coach. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our press conference with West Virginia head coach Mark Kellogg. Just a couple reminders. Please silence all cell phones. No cell phone video, flash photography, or video cameras are allowed in the press conference. And media may access press conference video at the NCAA digital workroom. When you have a question, please raise your hand. A microphone will be brought to you. And please, before every question, identify both your name and your affiliation. We'll go ahead and start with an opening comments from Coach Kellogg. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, great to be here. Um, we are thrilled. This has been a fantastic, you know, really first year. Um, I'm, I'm almost a year into it from the coaching standpoint when we got here a year ago. And, and we had goals and dreams and, um, you know, and, and visions for what the program can be and really excited um, and proud of the group that we've had and the year we've had. So battled some adversity um, along the way, got off to the great start, I guess, to the season and then battled through some adversity once we got into the Big 12 and, and some really close games. But I thought we've gotten better through it, um, gotten a little bit healthier here as of late. Um, and excited to be here, excited for the opportunity. When it's March Madness and when your name gets called, there's always something really, really special about that. And I never want our kids to take that for granted or our program to take that for granted. So I'm um, really excited. Obviously, we know what's in front of us in a difficult task in Princeton, and I'm sure we may have some questions there. Um, but really excited for the opportunity to compete again and take the floor one more time, at least with this team. Um, that's all you're guaranteed, um, you know, is one more. And so we need to go out and play our best and uh, see what we can do. All right, thank you, Coach. Go ahead to Dennis in the front. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Mark, I wonder if you could just ruminate about Caitlin Clark and which, you know, this is her building, this is her program. You're a step away from playing her, obviously. And then just the reaction to the reaction of your remarks on, on Selection Sunday. I guess you have to watch when the cameras are rolling at all times. Yeah, and it wasn't really even about that. I mean, I mean to your, I guess, initial question is she's – the greatest score in basketball history. Um, she's fun to watch. Um, my kids are here. They love to watch her. A lot of people, you know, even that sit in my seat um, can, yeah, sit and watch as a fan because she's, she's talented. She's changed our game. She's changed viewership. Um, you know, and it's not just her, but she certainly is the face. Um, but, you know, the coaching staff has, puts her in a position to to shine and let and let her teammates shine around her. And so I think it's more than her um, from what I can tell. Honestly, I haven't studied them a ton yet as a, as a coach coach. I've watched much more as a fan than I have yet as, you know, scouting and trying to figure out a game plan because we aren't to that yet. Um, you know, and it really wasn't about to your next question. You know, there was so much talk and conversation that led to that. Like it, it it's kind of been fun, I guess, in a way since then, but that wasn't the intent. Like, I'm not a trash talking, I wasn't out to get Caitlin Clark. Like, it's not Mark Kellogg versus Caitlin Clark. It really was, there was some surprise in the room is kind of how it got going with our seed is where, honestly, is really where it started. And so it was, oh, whoa, like, okay, like, thought we were a little, you know, that wasn't really the seed maybe that some people in the room were expecting, not even from me necessarily. Um, you know, and so it turned into, okay, well, let's get past that. Now let's talk about Princeton. So we discussed Princeton, as we should, and talked through what we knew about them. And then it came to Iowa, and we talked about Iowa. And then, of course, everybody in the room knows Caitlin Clark. And so it turned into Caitlin Clark. And actually, somebody else in the room is, is the one that used the packing line to me, you know. And it turned into, well, guys, if we want to go do something special, we have to win one. And then we'd have to send Caitlin Clark home, essentially, you know, metaphorically. You know, because people are all over it now. It's like home. Well, she's going to be home if you were to win. I'm like, yeah, it wasn't really like it's all been like kind of half so funny. Like there was really no intent in any way. I wasn't trying to do anything other than we had a group of people there that asked all the questions and we talked it all through and that came out. And then, you know, how social media works. The clip just kept getting, you know, I'd see it and the clip just keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And then finally, by the end of it, it was Mark Kellogg's calling out. Caitlin Clark or whatever. So um, anyway, it's where we've gotten. But I promise our attention has solely been on Princeton, like solely been on Princeton. Like we haven't even discussed Iowa other than the initial, you know, when it came out and where we were going and those types of things. But she's a generational talent. And, uh, you know, we would be fortunate to get the opportunity to play against her. But we've got plenty of business first. Steve. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, let's continue to talk about Caitlin, the other Caitlin. Thank you. Thank um, you. 
Yeah, and let's talk about Princeton as, as well. You bet. Um, what do you expect from them tomorrow? What are the challenges you, your team will be up against? And, and specifically, um, how do you hope to contain the other Caitlin, Caitlin Chen, in tomorrow's game? Yeah, because that Caitlin's really, really good, too. I mean, that, she is special good. Um, watched her a ton, just trying to figure out what we're going to do to slow her and, and slow them down. Um, but I think extremely, extremely well coached. Um, they run great stuff. Um, they're veteran. They've done this now. I think it's five consecutive, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they've won the first game the last two years, you know, against North Carolina State and Kentucky. So we know what they – I mean, we know – like, they have our complete attention. Um, our full attention is on Princeton. We know how good they are. Played a great non-conference schedule, you know, other than, I guess, what, the Columbia loss, right? Kind of handled the, you know, the Ivy schedule, I thought – you know, the way that you would expect a really quality team to do, um, you know, and, and so that I think those three guards that start are really good. Um, the other kid off the bench, the guard is really good, 13, you know, can play. And then those posts are tough. They're physical. They're strong. Uh, I mean, I, they're, they're good. I think they're really, really good. This is going to be one of the best teams that we've played all year. Um, so we've got to find ways to slow them down, um, you know, on the offensive end. And then they may not get enough credit for how good they are defensively. Um, I think this is team is really, really good on the defensive end. They're solid, um, you know, very fundamental in what they do. Um, and, and, yeah, they just do a great job on both ends. This is a, a very well-balanced basketball team. Go back to Dennis here in the front. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jen Hadfield with the next um, two questions about, you know, your scouting of Princeton. First one, you talked a little bit about the post, and I'm curious to get your take on the rebounding battle with Princeton being one of the best rebounding teams in the country by rebounding rate, just how you, how you approach that. And then just defensively, I know you guys are both really tough defensive teams. Can you kind of compare and contrast your style versus theirs defensively for me? Sure. Um, I thought you were going to say we are not a good rebounding team, but you just talked about them. Um, it's been our Achilles heel without question. Um, and it's every night for us. I mean, we've been in the Big 12 playing against elite size and rebounding, and we've had to figure out how to at least just hang around. Um, you know, a lot of rebounding, though, is, is limiting second chance points. So I think that's something to keep an eye on is just, you know, what do those rebounds lead to? Um, you know, and, and we find different ways to steal possessions, which a lot of times has been steals for us. And so that's how we kind of counteract or counterbalance the rebounding um, that has just been an Achilles heel for us. So we know that coming in, got some ideas on maybe how we can try to slow it down a little bit. But a lot of it is just personnel and they pursue it and they're really good at it. Um, and so we've got to be dialed in there. And then, yeah, both teams, I think, are really good defensively. Uh, we just do it completely opposite ways. Um, you know, ours is making you uncomfortable with our pressure and obviously the press. And we can, you know, get some runs fairly quickly if, if you don't value the basketball. Um, you know, and we can get out in the open floor and, and get going and use some of our speed and our quickness. Um, you know, and they do it the other way. Um, take away your space, be there on every single catch. Their hands are high. You know, I, I know their three-point field goal percent defense is not – great but they don't give up very many either so it's kind of a it's really a weird weird dynamic when teams shoot it at the rate they do but they still only give up i think 5.83s a game which is is not a ton so that will be an interesting thing to keep an eye on as well as what happens both ways from the three-point line i think mark you said something interesting at the top you said she's the greatest scorer in college basketball history does all this transcend gender you know what she's done? I think so, yeah, I, I, I do. I think this is the stuff she's doing at her age, um, the shot she takes, the confidence she has, you know. And I think the ability to pass, too. You know, we talk about her, the score, but then she averages, well, I don't know, what she, it's nine plus, right? I think nine plus assists per game. Like, that's what just even takes it to a whole nother level. Um, I mean, she's a dynamic scorer, has been, always was. Um, and I do think it trans, you know, both genders. Um, so when I say that, I'm, I'm talking men and women, you know, and I think she's the biggest name in college basketball right now, men or women, right? I think all the eyes are on Caitlin Clark. I don't know how we were talking about that out here. How does she maneuver Iowa City day to day uh, in a town like this, you know, with, uh, you know, with, with that name and, and everything that she's done for our sport and, and really basketball in general. I mean, she's completely changing um, a lot of what our sport has been. And I think the direction that it's going. Joe Percato, West Virginia Metro News. Mark, you obviously knew the type of player that Jordan was uh, coming into this year. Did you expect maybe some more growing pains as she got used to the uh, major conference level, or were you not surprised at all to see what she's done? Yeah, honestly, not too surprised. Uh, talking about Jordan Harrison, right? So, yeah, Jordan Harrison came with me from, from Stephen F. Austin and had a really, really good freshman year and, um, yeah, really picked up where she left off. Um, I thought she might have a little bit of an adjustment period early, 
Um, but really not too bad. Um, she has really picked up um, just, I thought she's a phenomenal defender, always has been, you know, to have her and JJ out there together is, is as elite as it gets, um, you know, but she's the point guard. She's the brains behind it. She's the coach on the floor, you know, with me and um, yeah, just ha leads us and our team looks at her to lead us. And so I think that's, you know, she's just a sophomore. So she's continuing to grow. This will be her first NCAA tournament, but um, you know, I'm excited to watch her and I think she's prepared her whole life for this. Greedy MSN, uh, when you look at J.J. Quinterly, her growth over the season, had All-America recognition, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, but uh, maybe the most standout thing is her growth as a leader as well since we're on that topic. Um, feels like she's more comfortable being that number one, sort of a reluctant superstar. Seems like she's grown in that role in just this one year. Yeah, no, I would say so. Yeah, I've, I've termed her the unassuming superstar all year and was really even quiet when I first got here. She's opened up a ton. She's learned how to communicate a little bit better, learned how to lead. Um, it's not vocally all the time. Most of the time, it's just by her effort. Um, but I think she's grown into that. I think when you, I don't know how she was when she was just up here, but hopefully she did a pretty good job because she's come a long way in that area in the ability to speak. But I think if you came to a home game and you watched the 50 to 100 little girls that were waiting for her outside the Country Roads gate, you know, in Morgantown to get her autograph. That says something. We were getting pictures at Halloween with little girls dressed up as JJ with her little tattoos um, on their body, you know, trying to look like JJ. So, um, no, we have a state that's rallied around her, um, but to her credit, she's, she's taken onus of it and really taken it to a whole nother level. Go ahead, Steve. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Uh, Coach, you come into this tournament actually having lost four of your last six, although I'll note that all of those losses, save one, were against teams in the tournament this year, so high-quality opponents. But does that concern you at all? Is, it, is that all behind now, or is there any concern on your part that um, there's a little bit of carryover on, on the – the, a bit of a slow finish to the regular season. No, not I don't not at all. Um, other than we need to find ways to to win those close games. Um, but no, great opponents. The Oklahoma State would be the exception, who was still a really really good basketball team, top I think sixty net. Just you know didn't make the NCAA tournament, and that was our third game in six days. And that was the only game, to be honest with you, that I was a little disappointed in, a, in our performance all year. We just we didn't have it. Uh, we didn't have the juice. We couldn't get over that hump at all in that game. But you know we go to K State and lose in overtime. You know, Aoka Lee had come back. You know, I think the game before. Um, you know, go to Baylor and get beaten a really good game losing a heartbreaker to Baylor at home, you know, a game that we should have and, you know, had every opportunity to win that one and then have a three to tie Kansas State again in the Big 12 tournament. So those are high-quality opponents, um, and we are right there. Um, we have been right there. And, and I think to answer your question, I guess, is I hope that's just a learning experience for us that helps us, you know, in these types of situations. And that's what you hope the Big 12 has done um, for us is because we've been in so many close games. Um, you know, some we've lost, some you win, but you're better because of, you know, that you've played those games. So, you know, these are good opponents. It's going to come down to the fourth quarter in some way, shape, or form, I have a feeling, you know, and then it's kind of who makes the most plays late. We have time for one more question. Joe Picotta, West Junior Metro News. Mark, have you seen a team get so much offense from their mid-range game as Princeton does? Do they compare to any Big 12 opponent? Uh, no, we have some that are, are, are very much mid-range driven, probably not, not – quality and quantity of Princeton there I mean they shoot it at a high high percentage which you just don't see a lot and you know the analytics tell you not to shoot that shot and then you watch Princeton do it and they do it at such a high level you're like yeah okay maybe it's still you know not too too much of a lost art if you can do it the way that they do it I haven't ever I, this is the a team that does it like at so many different positions you know normally you have one or two kids on a roster that live at the at the mid-range but they just keep coming and they keep coming and so it's obviously it's taught it's practiced it's recruited um, but they're they're pretty efficient um, you know at it and and so that's what scares you a little bit. Normally at times you're okay giving it up a little bit, but you probably better be careful against Princeton um, because they kind of make a living in that area. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thanks, everybody.